Oh, we can hear me. Yay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Mind Minx Show. I am your favorite Mind Minx, and I have an awesome guest today. But I have to wait because I almost forgot to um, give props to our sponsor, Absalom, because we are live on location here at Absalom, located at 223 DeGraw Avenue in Teaneck, New Jersey. So thank you. And let's get right to it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I have with me Paris Campbell. She is fucking hilarious. She has made TikTok videos um, that I want to watch. Like, I look at them every day. Well, like, you're, you. yeah, no, you're at the top of my, like, and I was telling you, I was like, now that, I, that I'm following on Instagram, too, I see them there. And I'm like, I don't see that I like this. I know I fucking like this. Where's my red heart? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Hello, Jenny, on my IG Live. We're going to turn the camera around because we don't want to see my mug. We want to see my guest. There we go. Hello, there IG she is. Live. Hello, hello. Okay. There we go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I, we've, we've gotten to talk a little bit this morning. So mm -hmm. I'm going to rehash some of it. That's okay. Yes. Let's so go. I always do homework on my guests, right? And I just want to, st you know, set this story. So I see you on TikTok for the first time. And we'll talk about what that TikTok was later. But I want to, so I reach out. I do my, you know, I'm going to shoot my shot text message. And, and you answer. And I'm like, because this is not just anybody. You have over 350,000 followers on TikTok. I know. That's crazy. It's weird. I definitely didn't, I never, I never expected that to happen, ever. I started with 23 followers in 2020, so it was kind of out of nowhere. I had 23 followers after two years of doing TikTok. <laughs> you have this beautiful oh, my show. Friend. Yeah, well, I, I actually started using TikTok just to make my promos until I, I you know, found another. Um, but I don't do videos as much, so I mostly am a watcher. Yeah, I'm it draws watching. you in like that. It yeah. keeps you. It keeps you there. It keeps you oh, watching. <laughs> right, long. So I remember, you know, doing my homework on you, and and well, first of all, now I know that there's a football player, <laughs> Paris <the> Campbell. <laughs> They're like, did you mean Paris Campbell or Paris Campbell? I was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> Shout out to Paris Campbell with two R's. Yes, with two R's. I'm, I don't know what team he plays for because I didn't go that far. Colts, maybe? Yeah, I think it's the Colts. Colts. I was going to say the Colts, but I didn't want to be wrong. But now that you said yeah. it, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. Um, but my memory sucks. So <laughs> <laughs> in any case, so I, I'm doing my homework and I'm going to do your promo. And just really quickly want to say this because um, you don't you do a lot of videos. So there aren't a gazillion stills of you on your page like you're beautiful. And you. I'm like, I got to, there's going to be easy to find a few pictures to do. And I was like, motherfucker, this woman has zero <laughs> pictures of herself. <laughs> and I actually did end up screenshotting one of your videos to use for. Oh yeah. Like, I saw with the water bottle. Yes. I thought that was cute though. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but so I was like, let me look at her tagged photos. And there was some tagged photos and you know, you have a very unique middle name and you know, so seen there. And so I, do, I'm that, I, I love, <laughs> so I googled the name and I was like holy shit we're just we're gonna because this is about you but I just want to put out to the world that you have amazing genes it's something in the fucking family because your grandma yeah is Miss America 1951 I know she, she was I don't remember amazing, shit and I remember the year <laughs> she was an amazing amazing lady I grew up with her and my grandfather um they raised me and yeah, she was incredible. And you know, along with being Miss America, she also was a civil rights activist. Oh, and she was a that. feminist and just incredibly outspoken and really like taught me so much growing up. I'm so lucky to have had her in my life. Well, she was definitely beautiful. And, and yeah, gorgeous lady. But yeah, and your mom too, like all of you, I'm sorry, you are gorgeous beyond Thank you. gorgeous. Yeah, so when, when the catfish fucking ship, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with these guys? <laughs> 
We'll talk. We're gonna talk about it. Yeah. And um, so your mom also has. All right, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Because this fucking killed me. So there's a picture of your mom with Demi Moore. Yeah, they were roommates. Shut the front door. Yeah, they were roommates. Um, I d- I don't know exactly when. I know it was after college. Um, but they lived together for a while in California. And that was around the time when Demi was dating Emilio Estevez, which is Charlie Sheen's brother. Right, right. Um, oh, so is that how that happened? Sorry, Emilio is Charlie's yeah, I don't... brother. Yeah, okay, yeah. yes. So Demi was dating Emilio. My mother at the time was dating Charlie. And they roomed together at a place, I believe, in Malibu or in L.A., but it was like kind of brief, but they were really good friends. Oh, okay. well, there's so I'm assuming because this picture is for sale right now for sixteen thousand dollars. It so, was taken by, by Andy, Andy Warhol. Warhol. Okay, so I did get that right. Yeah, at Demi like, Moore's thirtieth birthday party. Oh, okay. I was like, I wish I could take a picture and sell it for sixteen thousand dollars. I have right. like twelve thousand of them in my phone. There was this really cool picture that he took of my mom that was sold at auction a couple of years ago, and it was this picture of her holding this cat. And the cat is like stretched out and she's holding it like above her head and her hair's in this like messy bun. Um, and that one uh, sold at Christie's a couple of years ago. Wow. But yeah, sometimes they just kind of pop up out of nowhere. Well, uh, so the point of me bringing all of this up is that you definitely have stardom just like it, you were born with it. So this <laughs> is um, maybe it's Maybelline. No, no, it's Paris Campbell. <laughs> um, so. You so let's talk about you then. How did you get into not even just comedy? Because I, if I'm researched you correctly, do you do also voiceovers? I do not. Oh, I would. I've never done any voiceover work. Um, I have been told that maybe that's something I could do, um, but I've never tried it. Well, there's a, a profile out there for a Paris Campbell with one R that says you do voiceover. So it's probably my backstage profile, yes. which is yes. yeah. So when you sign up for backstage, if you're trying to do like um acting work for some reason if you buy their like pro thing they also give you a voiceover account gotcha so i don't do voiceover but if i ever wanted to i guess i have a place where i could advertise there (laughs) yes you do it pops up on on google (laughs) so how tell them talk about because all right so i feel like i know maris because i've watched a a lot not all but a lot of your your tiktok videos so i know that you went to private school yes so i went to performing arts boarding school from the age of 12 um with some hiccups there, but 12 to 18. Okay. And um, that was in Pennsylvania. It was an all-girls performing arts boarding school called Greer. And fancy schmancy. It was fancy schmancy. But it was also really fun. Um, taught me a lot about performing, being comfortable on stage. Um, we had a really good performing arts building and a lot of seating. And so when we would do productions, there were always like people there. So it was good to kind of get comfortable. And I think that that kind of helped me build a comfort for just being in front of people and that translated into what so when you turned 18 well there's a tiktok that shows what you did when you met your lesbian my my gay mother mother, my gay mother william (laughs) um yeah so i turned 18 i moved back to dc moved back into my grandmother's house um i was supposed to go to college but i didn't really want to i went then i dropped out then i went to another one then i dropped out um and i just didn't want to do it and i just kind of wanted to do my own thing I knew I I like was into comedy um so around 2011 2012 I started doing stand-up um and I did it for about three four years and then I moved to New York permanently and then I kind of stopped for a while okay but that's and I love that I love that you gave it a shot college because college isn't for everyone and I tell everybody you don't don't feel like because I grew up in that era where like you need to go to college Mm mm-hmm and you're a female, so it has to be something practical. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was a boomer, so he's like, you know, you're going to be a teacher <laughs> or maybe an accountant. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I switched majors. I did finish. Um, I took the long route, though. So, like, I technically should be a doctor with the amount of years that I went to college. Mm, wow. <laughs> but I only have my undergrad. But in any case, so I love that you were able to be strong enough to say, hey, listen, I gave it a shot, not just once but twice. Yeah. It's not for me. So when you came to New York, w- like, tell me that journey. Like, not for nothing. Even even your 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 SO right now, um, significant other, 
came from far away to New York. Like, mm-hmm. I love that when people are like, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. So, I mean, I was born here and I grew up part the year here and then part the year in D.C. But when I moved back to D.C. as an adult, like I, I knew I wanted to wind up here and I knew I wanted to eventually live full time in New York. Um, and at the time, I was working as a stylist for the brand Diesel. Okay. So I started with them in D.C. And then my boss was getting a job here in New York. And I was like, take me with you. Like, please take me with you. Wow. Like, I want to move there. Like, I'll I'll just – I'll work. Like, just please take me with you. Um, and she did. So I transferred to uh, Diesel's New York flagship – and I worked there for a couple more years, um, but then eventually ended up going to like different retail jobs and eventually falling back into comedy in around 2019, 2020, like right when the pandemic started, unfortunately. Mm. But now things are getting a little better. So let's talk about that. So yeah. you, you're in New York. Mm-hmm. You, But by the way, you're in New York. Like most people say, oh, I'm going to go to New York, but they like take the safe route and move to Jersey. So it's not a, as expensive. <laughs> but you're in New York. And At the time, yeah, I lived in Harlem. I moved straight wow. into the city. Now I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. But so yeah, I was in, in Manhattan Brooklyn. for a long time. I, I To me, that's uh, fascinating because I, I grew up in this area my whole entire life. So I know the cost. And it's just like... Would I love to live in the city? Absolutely. Like this city that never, it's very inspiring, just, you know, invigorating to be a part of all that. But yeah, my pocket does not like it. Yeah. I mean, it was a hustle for sure. Like the first, I mean, it still is, but it was especially back then living in the city, um, working commission based retail. It was like, you never wow. knew. Like one month it would be like you'd make really good money and the next month it was like, I can't afford my rent. So <laughs> Wow. It was about like balancing and like making everything that you could stretch longer. How did you stay sane? Uh eventually I ended up quitting <laughs> and I ended up getting a job that had like a an actual set hourly rate. Because okay. I was like at least I like I was making a little bit less when I did that, but at least it was dependable. Right. It was like at least I know every month I'll be able to pay my rent. Right. Um, and then I, I, yeah, I kept doing that up until, um, about a year ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about it. Pandemic hits. You're trying to do stand up. Did you actually get to do any before we went into lockdown or? A little bit. I started going up a little bit, mostly just open mics. Um, actually only just open mics before the pandemic. Um, and I was going up a lot at Eastville Comedy Club in Brooklyn because for some reason I, I was like, okay, I want to get back into stand up. And I just like looked up like where should I go? <laughs> and for some reason, Eastville was like one of the first places that came really? up because it's like, it's like one of the only actual like comedy clubs in Brooklyn. I mean, now there's one or two. I mean, I guess it would just be like Eastville, Tiny Cupboard and Brooklyn are like the three comedy clubs in Brooklyn that are actual comedy clubs. Mm. And so I found Eastville and I was like, let me just go there. So I started doing open mics there. And then I found that they had on Monday nights, they have a really cool mic called Firestarters. Um, which is run by uh, Divya and Alex, who are two awesome comedians. And um, I started signing up for that mic, and it's an LGBTQ um, and women's mic. So those um, started getting audiences, and I felt more comfortable, and then I started spreading out after that. That's cool. So how do you come up with the, the content that you talk about on stage? Like, how do you figure out if it's funny enough? So on stage, everything that I say on stage, I write myself. Um, And it's just a really long period of sorting through your – like you have an idea, you write it down, and then you try it out as soon as you can at an open mic. Um, And then you keep doing that until the joke just kind of grows on its own. Like um, sometimes I'll write something and I'll say it accidentally some way on stage and it'll come out really funny. Like there was one joke I have – um where I'm talking about my family and I talk about my grandfather and I'm like my grandfather was a really important guy I guess and like I said it like in this way that was like I guess whatever and that got a big laugh but before I was like serious about it right so obviously it didn't get a laugh so you learn like little things like that like the more you tell your own jokes and then it just becomes like its own kind of natural flow and does it feel natural like to do the same joke over and over again um Natural, maybe not. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't think it feels unnatural. Okay. I mean, it definitely feels like you're doing a set, right? Like, you know kind of what you're going to do, but everything is always a little bit different from mm-hmm. the way that it was the last time. Okay. So it never feels, like, completely repetitive. Cause I like feel you're like, just reading a script. Yeah, because okay. stand-up's one of those things where, like, you are very much um, kind of feeding off of the audience responses. So depending on the vibe in the room or depending on, like, how your set is going, you might do something totally differently because you're responding to, like, their energy. Okay. Okay. Because that's what the one thing I was like. To, to me, being a comedian is one of the hardest um, professions because – it might have been funny the first time, but you just said you're, you're feeding off the audience because, like, it's so difficult to try to be funny. Like, I, I tell a joke, and I say my biggest flex is that I have a comedian who's a friend, Dwayne Burris Jr., mm-hmm. and he thinks I'm fucking hysterical. So that's my <laughs> biggest flex, right? But it's like I, it's, I never can say the same joke twi- twice, and even if I tried, it would never come out. So to me, it's very difficult to for to be a comedian because like you guys have to make us laugh every time and i do every time i l- watch a video especially with your tiktoks or whatever if i see the same one twice i still laugh and i think that's such <laughs> that's incredible yeah no i think that's <laughs> so fucking cool like Thank i you, you know I, so yeah i'm i'm like your one of your biggest brands i don't you know I don't want to take away from. I appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) But I think it's hysterical. So let's get back. I want to talk about how it is that I I came across Stop It Paris. Yeah. So, well, why is your handle Stop It Paris? Because Paris Campbell was taken, to be (laughs) honest, originally. (laughs) Um, But, no, I was was trying to think of, of something that was kind of, like, on par with, like, my vibe. And I was, like... I could do Paris laughs or Paris is funny or I don't know, something like that. But I was like, no, like people are probably going to look at my content and be like, shut Stop it down. It. Like shut it down. Got it. I so I was it. like, yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> Somebody just commented that death is easy. Comedy is hard. Yeah, it is. Harvey. I that agree. is. Yeah. Harvey, that was deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right. So I come across your page and, um, there's this TikTok that that you made um, about somebody trying to call you out for being catfish. Ah, uh, yes. They said you were the catfish. You got a super like, and it was only a super like so that they can literally tell you you were a catfish. So this was back when I was um, dating, and I had Tinder. And this guy who, like, you have to pay for – this is one thing that I want people to understand about this story – is this man had to pay not just for Tinder Gold, not just for Tinder Plus, for Tinder fucking Platinum, which is like $40 a month. So first of all, (laughs) this man was paying $40 a month for Tinder. That's like the biggest (laughs) red flag. (laughs) Like, and he worked in finance. So like, you know, we already know what this guy's about. Uh But um, yeah, he, he like, paid $40 for Tinder just to send me a swipe message, which is like a message that someone sees without them matching with you. Okay. So like I did not express interest in this man. I was just swiping through (laughs) my thingies and then I see this message and all it says is catfish. And immediately I knew he wasn't caught. Like I knew he didn't actually think I was a catfish. Um, He was negging and it made me so mad for some reason. I was like, cause I hate when guys do that, when they insult you to get a response. Like, guys will, like, call you ugly just so you turn around and you're like, why would you say that to me? And then they'll be like, oh, I didn't mean it. I think you're really cute. And then you'll be like, oh, my God, really? Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, marry me. Like, <laughs> I hate I love that. you. I hate that shit. Mm-hmm. It's toxic. So I was in an especially weird mood that night. I think that I had just gone through, like, a thing I I don't know. I remember I was really angry that night and I saw that message and I was like, yeah, no, fuck this. (laughs) And I just made the video. Dude, you went all out. You didn't just say fuck this. You like said fuck this. You dug the fucking ground out and then buried him. So what I did was I used objects in his Tinder photos to scale his height. So what happened? Okay. I saw the swipe message. I look at his bio, his profile. The only thing it said was six foot one. That was the only thing it said. She screenshotted it, by the way. You got to go see this shit. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up scaling all of the items in his pictures because I was like, I was like, OK, so you're calling me a catfish to try to get attention. But the only thing it says in your bio is 6'1". And I looked at this man and I'm like, man, you're not 6'1". <laughs> so I calculated that his height was 5'10". 
and then I posted it on TikTok. No, wait. <laughs> based on what? <laughs> based on based on um, his coffee cup, his sunglasses, and the inseam of his shorts. <laughs> the sunglasses. She knew how many millimeters the sunglasses were. Yeah, it was and like then, 165 yeah. millimeters oh in width. This shit is fucking hysterical. And then you made the so that is the video. So what I me- did though was I ended up like after I made the video. Within 30 minutes, I knew this video was going to go viral because it was it was 30 minutes later and it was already sitting at like 100,000 views. And that's the fastest that any of my videos have ever taken off. Well, so I, I was that like, shit out too. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this thing is going to be viral in the morning. So what I did was I went back to the because I paid for I paid for Tinder Gold, which is a modest like seven dollars a month. So I'm not a creep. But um. <laughs> I went to my matches, I found him, I matched with him, and then I sent him a message and I said, have you heard? <laughs> what did he say? He unmatched me by the morning. <laughs> he didn't respond. <laughs> he did not respond. So I guess he heard. Well, everybody heard about this, including, wasn't it the New York Post? It was in Newsweek, it was in New York Post, it was in The Sun, it, like, it, it wound up on this like Australian website. Wow. <laughs> it was all over all the over. place. So when I tell you, I feel very lucky to have you sitting across <laughs> from me right now, like Thank near you. Post Newsweek. Like this went viral for real. And like in the video, you when because you said in your picture, in your profile picture, you don't have makeup on. No, it was literally a picture of me. It was I was in the same position that I was in recording the TikTok yep. video. And then so, you even said, let me, let me. So I was like, let me yeah. demonstrate. <laughs> and I like held the phone and I was like, that's me. Um, but yeah, I, I never really believed that he actually thought I was like a fake profile or anything. Okay. I thought he was just trying to get attention. And I just felt like I was just so tired of it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to use you as an example. Maybe not the nicest thing to do to that one individual man, but I bet he hasn't negged anyone since. He never reached out though? Never. Wow. Never. I would have been like, hey, I was the one. Let me capitalize on this with you. (laughs) Why can't I be there with you? I mean, I'm sure. I feel like when things like that happen, like he's got to have benefited from it in some way. Yeah. Like I'm sure he's gotten like a few dates out of it or something or. Now that makes it even more typical. If you didn't reach out to him, be like, hey, you know, I'm the subject of your viral video. Let's do something together. And But he still benefited without reaching out. That's so fucking typical. Of a, yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? I don't know anything about him. I, I can make my own assumptions. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me move because, like, there we go. I can see my ring light. Okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's my favorite video. So then that's why I started following you, right? And then you start making videos about the new Sex in the City reboot. Yes, I was hate watching. Oh my God. But then you have me hate watching too. I'm like, I got this all wrong. Well, I got so angry because that movie or that movie, that show was like, I, I binge watched like repeatedly, like the entire series at way too young of an age. Like, unfortunately, I grew up on that show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it had its problems back in the day looking back. Like when we look back, like there was, you know, poor representation of queer people, people of color, even women, you know, like there could have been better representation all around. But to see them like do it in such like a hokey way it in was the hokey. reboot, it yeah. was like it was so cheesy and it felt so try hard. And I was like, you are ruining it. Like I there was know. such a departure from all of the characters, I feel. Yes. Everybody felt like like they'd aged the exact opposite way than we expected them to. Right. And even, um, oh gosh, of course I'm going to blank on their fucking names. The one who's gay in real life. Miranda. Miranda. So I think it was smart that they tried to segue her actual lifestyle Mm -hmm. into the show, but it was just so rushed and so like... Yeah, and I think the character of Che themselves bothered me because I do identify as a non-binary person. Um, I use she, she, they pronouns. So... Having that representation be so stereotypical just bothered me so much because I was like, can we just get one show where we have non-binary people that aren't like the typical stereotypical visual walking poster child for like, you know, what you would assume a non-binary person looks like. Not that there's anything wrong with that representation because that is a valid representation in itself, but we need more than just that. 
I, I agree with you. I but I'd never heard of of Che before. Yeah, the show. So for me, it was definitely. I remember telling you, I was like, I cried the very first episode. I cried when Mr. Big died, mm-hmm. and uh, and I literally got up and hugged my husband. <laughs> And he's like, what? What did I do? <laughs> you didn't die. <laughs> but then listening to your, like, really? She just stood there? She didn't call? She had a cell phone in her hand? Yeah, what she the fuck was she phone. doing? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. I think I would have called the 911. I'm like, if if anyone ever finds me like that, like, like please. Please call. The, yeah. Like, don't hold me. Call. <laughs> like, she wanted that to happen. Hold on. We got another comment. Terminologies people must ever. Uh, what terminology, Jonathan? Somebody said these terminologies people making up every day can't keep up. Oh. What non-binary? You sound like a joy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is a struggle. I'm not gonna lie. My son actually, he just turned 13. Just to mm-hmm. speak really quickly, he just turned turned 13. He does identify as bisexual. Um, has had zero sexual <laughs> encounters, so I don't know how he can identify, but that's part of the struggle. Like, he's mm-hmm. having a big struggle trying to understand transgender. I mean, honestly, I think it's just all about, like, just being open, answering any questions that they – making them feel like they're not alone, you know? Just as long as yeah. they have, like – I feel like as long as you feel supported in whatever journey you're going through, as long as you know you have people who are not going to judge you, who are not going to – you know, stop loving you, who are just going to be there for you no matter who you are, what you love, you know, what you don't like. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think that's just the most important part. But he's young, so he'll figure it out. Yeah, he's, that's he'll what I keep telling He's like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, like, he's <laughs> he's gifted, though. Yeah. So, like, he has uh, something called hyperlexia. So he's oh, obsessed okay. with learning. So it's the opposite of yeah. dyslexia. So he'll, you know, he'll become obsessed and now now when he was younger it was no big deal like who cares he's obsessed with learning how to read no problem go ahead read yeah mm-hmm. three um but now it's becoming more complex topics and his brain hasn't yet yeah matured to actually understand it so yeah. i think he's absorbing this stuff and like it feels like he's gonna implode because like what does he do with it oh yeah. your mind isn't ready to handle it so it's okay just take a step back that's incredible though because you know when his mind is eventually kind of able to connect the dots he'll have all of this like knowledge that he just already kind of has banked back there so Mm -hmm. i think a lot of growing up is a lot of things kind of connecting and making sense so i'm sure that as time goes it'll hopefully yeah hopefully i mean i went through a lot of like young i I went through a lot of like self-identity issues when i was that age and it worked itself out. It just takes time. But as long as you have someone who's there for you, I think that that's the mm-hmm. most important thing. We are. We're here. Okay, so Jonathan, I think he wants to know what non-binary means. So non-binary um, just means that you are out of the gender binary, so you don't necessarily identify fully as female or male, um, man or woman, whatever you want to call that. Um doesn't have anything to do with your like uh sex so you're like assigned sex at birth um it's just your gender identity so that like cultural concept of who you are as a person might not be just man or woman right and and it's okay because at the end of the day we are starting to learn scientifically speaking for everyone out there who's like well follow the science you want to follow the science then follow and we're starting to learn scientifically there really are more than two yeah genders so um thank you for that yeah of course i told you we're gonna digress yeah (laughs) (laughs) so all right let's get back to it so we're talking about sex and the city reboot i don't even remember what it's called and just like that just like that in any case (laughs) so mr big dies and (laughs) We get to watch. So this is, I would watch the episode and then immediately go see if you had posted your, your <laughs> and I'm like, huh, I didn't think of it that way. So even uh, Charlotte fucking pissed me the fuck off. Oh my gosh. It made me so mad. Like when did she be, like, I knew she was always the more proper one. Yeah. I expected her to be a little bit like uptight because she's always been a little uptight. uptight but she's like fucking wound. Yeah. I didn't expect Charlotte to suddenly have issues with, like, racism. Because I was like, Charlotte never... She was trying way too fucking Like, she never had those issues. Like, and I understand why they brought that into the show, because I do think it's an incredibly important topic to, like, bring up, you know, things, things need to change. But, like, it just felt out of character for her. So I, I feel like maybe they could have had that positive message of, you know, 
I mean, positive message of not being racist. Like, why does that need to be a positive message? Yeah. Like, just don't be racist. Yeah, like, we still have to fucking talk about it, people. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I'm, – I'm so glad that people are talking about it. But I feel like it was just a weird thing for her character to suddenly have an issue. Um, also, how did you feel about Charlotte's daughter – I thought it was great that they included um, some type of representation. I think that they could have handled Charlotte's reaction better, but I think that in a way it was it was kind of accurate in what a parent might go through when they're finding something like that out and maybe not familiar with you know, what that means or haven't been around it before. So I tried to not judge them too harshly for that, and I was happy that they didn't give like an offensive representation for the child. Like, the, like, it seemed like it was, like, a good image for the kid. Okay. Or at least I took it that way. Well, so the child did do a good job of having that personality that you knew she wasn't girly girly. I felt like the child's portrayal of, like, their gender identity was was accurate and endearing and, mm-hmm. you know, sweet and innocent and, you know, just what I, I would like I to see. I was a little angry, though. Oh, you were? That Charlotte that her husband made oh yeah i didn't like the the parents reactions yeah yeah that's the part that i had the problem with so one of the the daughters it was the adopted daughter i think Mm -hmm. was going to be in a show and they wanted to all get dressed up it was a big deal Mm -hmm. and she bought her this dress to put on she's like i don't want to wear that and Mm -hmm. like literally like forced her like she still made it her own which i appreciate but i was a little pissed off that really that's that's i don't know that to me clothing is clothing that doesn't represent it's how you wear it mm-hmm. that represents what you know what I mean like don't go in baggy jeans if you're gonna be in yeah but so that pissed me off a little bit and my last question I wanted to ask you before like the elephant in the room question um how did you feel about the the them killing no they didn't kill him off he died of cancer during filming oh. and they like made him like leave I guess I understand we're talking about Stanford, um, and I Horrible guess names. I understand why. I mean, you know, because he he um, Willie passed away in real life, so right. um, I understand why they had to remove the character, obviously. But I do think, like, why they why they do it like that? Yeah, like, that's why they do him yeah, like that. Like, didn't like that. That was weird. Um, and, and the other guy didn't see him. And I'm sorry, I'm horrible with names. I love these shows, but I'm horrible with names. Um. M M M M M M M M M. There was Stanford Blatch and Anthony. Anthony. Oh, Anthony. Anthony. Yes. Yeah. But like he just went on, just went on with his life. Yeah. And like so, wait, did they make it seem like Stanford like left with a client and was like you know broke up with him and yeah he made it sound life? like Stanford like ran off like right. like oh right. Stanford just went of off nowhere. and he's just doing like we're we're not going to be together anymore. I mean. Couldn't they? Because, you know, they did that whole, like, fake long-distance thing for Samantha's character, and Kim Cattrall is not involved at all. Well, that was the elephant in the room question. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that in a second. But there was – um yeah, so they have n- her doing no involvement, but they still kept her plot line going. Mm-hmm. So why couldn't they have done something similar with Stanford, at least for a few episodes, give some closure to, like, the marriage? Especially because the first episode, they were like, you know, you need to show me a little bit more affection. And yeah. it was Stanford, right? It wasn't Anthony, right? Or was it the other way around? No, I think you're right. I think it, it was, was – Stanford it was, was like, you need to yeah. show me some more affection. Yeah. And then all of a sudden – Bye. Fuck you. Yeah, it was a weird end. I think, I don't know. The only thing I kind of gathered from it, I was like, maybe they were just like frazzled. Like maybe, because, you know, this happened during production. Right. So I'm like, they must have had a different story written for his character because he was supposed to be in more episodes. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe they were just kind of like, I don't know. We just need to like not deal with it, which is sad to the character. But like, I can't think of another reason why they would have done that. I just feel like, considering the the production of the what it used to be on mm-hmm. the show, even the movies, this felt super rushed. It did. It felt weird. But I've never Googled so much what happened between Carrie and Samantha. Mm. Yeah. I don't know many details other than, like, the, the publicness of what Kim Cattrall recently said. Well, a couple years ago. I know when Kim Cattrall's brother passed away, 
uh, Sarah Jessica Parker tweeted out her condolences Mm -hmm. and Kim Cattrall or it was on Instagram she like said something and then Kim Cattrall posted this picture and then was like Sarah Jessica I don't need your support right now you are not my family you are not my friend yeah and that's yeah like outright said those things and Mm -hmm. that was the first time that we ever got like confirmation of like oh okay there's beef there but it was like speculated even during the original series there was this like there's always been this kind of like insinuation that Sarah Jessica might be a little bit catty and very intimidated by Kim Cattrall. Probably. Well, she's beautiful. But and there was always like a rivalry of like um and this is all alleged, obviously. Right. Yes. Like I don't know any of this. We don't sure. have any facts. Don't sue me. <laughs> um but allegedly there was like this kind of rivalry between like who was getting like better scenes or like which character was getting like better storylines and i read something where samantha um or kim cattrall had kind of felt that samantha was kind of used as like the butt of the jokes like in a negative way sometimes sure sure. um and i think that part of that was like some real life rivalry that was happening that we just didn't know about until like a couple years ago well i didn't know anything about it and to be honest i didn't even think about it until i started reading all that like huh Mm -hmm. you're right like nobody ever had as much sex as she did, and yeah. you know what I mean, like or like like the like the hair thing, like yeah. when they like you know like the bozo the clown yeah situation. Like she, even with her with her cancer, mm-hmm. and this, like why was it her of all the characters? Yeah, and then in the movies, like they make her like when she breaks up with um or when she moves with that guy, like they make her like eat all her feelings and like she gets like quote unquote like overweight which she was right. never overweight right but you know like they tried to like make her look like the fat one or mm-hmm. like and it was like why are you doing this to her but never thought about it until yeah someone's like hey look at it from this perspective yeah look at it like uh the actresses might actually be like kind of i guess fighting it out on camera in a way so what do you think do you think that the because you did mention that there was like the the fake text messaging bet- back and forth between Samantha and Oh, do I think that Kim will do season two? No. No? I don't think she will. I would be shocked. I mean, if she she does, then, like, good for her, because that means they're paying her bank. Right. But I don't think that she would do it. I hope she does. I'm on her side. I'm on her side, too. (laughs) I am, which kills me, because I want to love Sex and the City. I did. I I was older, Mm -hmm. obviously. So for me, that was, like... I can do that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Type of t- situation. Um, and I love that. Yeah, I consider myself Samantha. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, babe. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I do have a younger man. So there you go. <laughs> but all right. So let's get back. I have a question. Where? Do, so you have posted how many videos you know off the top of your hands on TikTok? How many? I do don't you know. Have? Well, there's a lot. Like, I couldn't even get through I know them. that it's over. I know there's over a thousand videos, um, but I don't know how many. How, that's a lot of content. It is. How do you come up with the ideas? Um, it depends. I mean, if I'm if I'm on like a if I'm hyper focusing on something, like I'm posting about it. So when I was watching the Sex and the City show, I would post, you know, for the recaps, it would be up to like three or four parts per episode. Mm-hmm. So with ten episodes, that's like 40, 50 videos oh, nice, right, right there. there. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing true crime stuff, then I'm like keeping up with it. Well, the Gabby Petito one, I was keeping up with minute by minute. So there's over 80 videos on that topic. Wow. Um, and then sometimes I just have a thought come into my head. Like the other night, we had like a conversation. Um, I know you guys can't see my boyfriend, but he's in the room. So I just pointed <laughs> to him. My boyfriend and I had a conversation the other night where I like made a joke about like flossing or something. And then I walked into my bedroom and I had this kind of like thing go into my head. So I just like in my bed recorded that video about flossing. Um, so things like that. Just anytime anything comes in my head, I just do it. And so wait, that, that brought me to the next because you did a TikTok right before. Was it a TikTok or a live for your Instagram? Um, I a did story. A, when I was sitting here. Yeah. That was a story, story. for TikTok. But she did it literally in like two seconds. <laughs> and like I have because most of my videos are always like I like to do the transition ones. So I'll do my yeah. face with no makeup and then with makeup. Mm-hmm. So I started one this morning and then later on I'll finish. Yeah. It. Like I have ones like those. Like I'll do like um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll like batch record like 
like before transitions okay. so okay. like if I like wake up and I'm like oh I look really rough this morning <laughs> like I'll just like record like five or six like you oh, know you? starts okay. of it and then maybe like two three months later I'll like have... oh thank god so if I forget today it's all right oh yeah yeah okay. like sometimes I'll like sometimes I'll like look really good one day and I'll be like oh I got dressed up for this thing oh let me do a transition video from like a few months ago so I have like I think I have like 700 and something drafts on TikTok. Wow. So like sometimes I'll just go back and I'll finish something and I'll just post it. Nice. I, I'm learning today because like I have not that much content on there. I'm trying because they are getting views. Like my last video that I posted, like um, I put my a picture of me when I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. And I've, I was I have the ugly duckling syndrome. I feel like I was like the ugly duckling when I was a kid. And then all of a sudden I turned 40 and I was like, wow, you're actually beautiful. You <laughs> so are beautiful. I said to myself, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I did one of those mm-hmm. and uh, that one got over 1700 views. I know that's probably like chump change. No, too, that's but, like, great. It's like I got over 1700 views for that. Yeah. No, I have a video I posted two days ago that five, 500, 600 views. Oh. So, I mean, sometimes it doesn't work. And we talked about this earlier Mm -hmm. that you – oh, wait, hold on. Somebody said I have a great smile. Oh, no. She's got a great smile or I've got a great smile. Sorry, Harvey. It's got to be. It's got to be you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We talked about this earlier. So, you know, obviously being the amount of followers that you have, you're part of the creator fund. Yeah. But you said it's it's not – it's so – not uh what's the word i'm looking for somebody help me with this the variable source. yeah there's so many variables it's not a constant that this isn't the motivation that you post no because i joined the creator fund in like mid-november it was like right before thanksgiving so i've only been a part of it for what like six months mm-hmm. five six months um before that i mean my first year and a half on tiktok i was not part of the fund so i wasn't making any money on my videos and Making money on TikTok, it's one of those – it completely depends on so many different factors. People think it's, like, all about likes, all about views. It's everything. Mm -hmm. It is your likes, your views, your comments, your follows, your watch time, how many videos people are watching of you in a row, how many seconds people are spending on your profile, are they clicking any links. Like, it's everything. And But mostly it's if people are scrolling their For You page, sometimes an ad will pop up before your video, and then that's how you get, like, the ad revenue. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That is a lot. It's a whole fucking job all by itself, man. Yeah. So it's like so many different things. So like I remember the like the most amount of money I've made in one day on TikTok. And this is going to make it sound like I make a lot more than I do because we'll go over. It. I don't. Um, Was $500 in one day. But to put that in perspective, that's 15 million views. Wow. In one day. That's. That, wow. That, is, that has happened once in my entire time ever with TikTok and probably will never happen again. That was Tinder Catfish and like the subsequent videos that followed. Um, And then other than that, you can make a cent a day. So like I think overall in like six months, I might have made like a couple thousand dollars. So it's not like something you can like live Live off off of. of. Yeah. We're not the – what is the – who's the girl – uh, oh, oh, Charlie D'Amelio. Charlie D'Amelio. I never who knew who the fuck that was before. Right? <laughs> She's getting $500 days every day, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. I Allegedly. I, well, I, I've seen a TikTok where they're, it's like in the millions that she's making a year. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. fucking crazy. I mean, I know that some like big creators, like, like Victoria Paris, I really respect her for doing this. She, at the end of her year, like when she was doing her taxes this year, she like came out and like told everyone like exactly how much she made. Um, and it was honestly like, I mean, yeah, it was a lot of money, but like, she's one of the top creators on the platform, but it wasn't as much money as I was expecting. Like it was realistic. And I was like, I respect you for doing that. Wait, who is Victoria Paris? Victoria Paris is an influencer who she's really big on TikTok. She's, her content is, um, very lifestyle, like lifestyle. So like, she's like, she vlogs everything. Like she just, she shows everything. Um, she used to post like over the pandemic when she first started it was like it was like 16 videos a day it was just My like goodness. bam 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 yeah pandemic was a fucking yeah and i mean now she's, she still TikTok. posts a lot but um yeah i guess i'd call her like a lifestyle influencer okay i thought it was because i there's this one tiktoker that i let she her it's like 
Victoria something. I don't remember what the handle is, but she does like funny videos. Like her voice is, uh, she sounds very valley-ish in some of her videos. Mm. But she's like, oh. oh, is it the girl who does the boyfriend loyalty checks? Or the girl who she's about to be kidnapped and she's like, oh, where? <laughs> and then, yeah, no, like, <laughs> she's fucking hysterical. She's like, um, where are we going? And he's like, I'm kidnapping you, but I'm not a kid. <laughs> and I don't want to nap. That's like funny. that type of stuff. Like I, I think I don't know if I follow this oh person, but I need to find her. Okay, it. I'll, I'll follow <laughs> for it. She's fucking his. I, I think she's. But her, same. That's why I asked you if it was who was a. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't sound like the same thing. Um, but yeah, I need to see that. And she tries. <laughs> she, she ends up. She gets in jail, and she ends up convincing the, uh, the cop to let her out because she needs to get her venti mocha swirl. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sorry, I digress very easily, but she's fucking hysterical. So yeah, I'll definitely forward that to you. All cool. right. So I want to make sure that w- everyone knows where they can reach you. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on TikTok and Twitter at Stop It Paris. And then on Instagram, I'm Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell. Yep. Yeah. And if you guys already follow me, then you can find her there. I'll yeah. be tagging her on top of my video today. Um, is there anything? Well, you said May 14th. You have a pretty important show coming up. Oh, yeah. On May 14th at Broadway Comedy Club, I'll be doing a show at 5 p.m. Uh, the show is called The Industry Room. It is going to be very exciting. And um, if you're interested, I do have the link for tickets in my bio on all of my socials. And you have a website, too, right? Yes, I have a pariscampbell.com. Oh, my God. I do. But you said it's new, so it's okay. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) I was using one of those, like, uh, link tree thingies up Mm -hmm. until literally last night. So, yeah, now there's pariscampbell.com. I can't even figure out link tree. Never mind. Yeah. Anything else. All right. So I want to do something new. And we talked about this before. So I want to do, like, an end of show game and see if we can figure this out. And luckily, we have some people with us in the room so that they can help me out. Because (laughs) before we, like, practiced, not practiced, but I explained it. And she said Dave Chappelle, and I was like, <laughs> "Like you stumped me on the first fucking." Episode. No, we'll do a different one. We'll do a different one. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna do something. If you've ever seen um, Six Degrees of Separation or Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, the whole point is trying to figure out how you can connect me to a certain person in six degrees or less. Can I say something really funny? Yes. You are one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon. I am. Because I have met him. See? So you get to say that you're one degree of separation. I'm one degree from Kevin Bacon. Okay. So, all right. So, we're, so, but wait, the rule is the first degree that we have to, to go from is my guest on the show today. So whomever we choose today, I have to say I'm connected to Paris and then from there. So the, technically I only have five. Okay. Okay. All right. So you get to guess a person or pick a person, not guess a person. Okay. I'm going to... This might be a hard one, but it's the only one in my head. Okay. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Janet Jackson. Oh, good one. Damn it. This is my thinking face. Okay, so Janet Jackson. Um, all right, you guys can help, too. Come on, let's talk this out. So Janet Jackson. All right, so now let's do it from you. So you, Paris Jackson, you said you've met Kevin Bacon. There you go. I'm sure Kevin Bacon has yeah, met Janet. Yeah, some way. Mm. Or we could go me, my mom, Andy, I was, Michael, <laughs> Janet. Did Was that six degrees? That was, yeah, I think that was six degrees. I mean, I was supposed to figure that out, but like, holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> we did it. If I'm right. All right, so it's Paris. If Andy, if Andy Warhol ever met Michael, Michael, I mean, I'm of sure, course. I'm sure he did. Of course. All right. We'll fact check that later. Yeah. But we did. So it's me. So Mind Wings, Paris Campbell. My st- mother. Your mom. Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson, Jackson Janet Jackson. Jackson. Or that maybe, was, maybe even Andy Warhol. Right Janet to Jackson. Janet. We that was six degrees or less. Thank you. Oh, my Dang. God. That was, that was actually kind of fun. I do like that. So. I like that. <laughs> 
All right. So thank you so much thank for coming Thank you. I'm in. so glad we did this. Yes, me too. I'm going to tell you, I've wanted to meet you so bad for so long. I feel like I know you. So I know, me too. And I was like, oh my gosh, today's the day. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you for Mr. Boyfriend for coming in also, who's also a comedian. So let's plug him. What's his name? Mike Czar. His album just came out. It's called Sweatin'. It is was number one on iTunes last I checked, um, oh, but you can. F- it did. Yes. You posted that it was number two, so let's push yeah, it. Yeah, it pushed to number one. Awesome. Um, but yeah, Sweatin' Mike Czar, um, pleased by his album. It is very good. He's very funny. All right, thank you. All right, so everybody, it's a brand new fucking week, so let's go own it and mind your favorite minks and join us next time. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Cause I'm pregnant. Cause I'm pregnant.